it's Lon Seiben, and I'm taking a look at another network attached storage device. This time it is the Buffalo Link Station 210. And I have, again, looked at a bunch of these from WD, from uh, Synology, from QNAP, you name it, I have looked at it, Seagate 2. Uh, so why not look at Buffalo? They've been doing these for quite a while. It's a very Spartan device. Uh, it's basically a hard drive enclosure that connects to your network. And like the other network attached storage devices we've looked at, this cannot be really directly connected to a computer. You can, of course, uh, kind of just plug in the Ethernet cable directly and set up your IP addresses, but um, generally these are designed to work over a network and serve multiple users as well as have some limited cloud access. So uh, they don't quite work. This one, too, doesn't quite work like Dropbox, but you can move files back and forth uh, from wherever you are, and it seems to actually work pretty well. So this is it here. It's a very, um, it's a very thin plastic shell. The drive you can actually see through here, um, and that's for for cooling purposes. They advertise it as fanless, and it is, but it's still rather noisy because you hear the hard drive uh, running pretty loudly in here. It does come with a Seagate. Uh, this particular model is a three terabyte model. Has a Seagate Barracuda drive, a 7200 RPM drive, so a pretty high performing drive that they put in here. Uh, it is a single drive, so you want to have a backup uh, also. And uh, to do that, they have a USB 2.0 port on the back that you can use to plug in an external hard drive to back this up onto. Uh, you can also back it up over a network to other Buffalo Link Station devices. And if you don't want to have a backup, which I don't recommend, uh, you can use the USB port uh, as, uh, for printers too, so it can work as a print server, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, one thing it doesn't support though are USB hubs or multiple drive kind of adapters, you know, like uh, card readers and that sort of thing. It's got to be a single USB device. They don't support multiple devices on there. Uh, gigabit Ethernet also, which is good for transferring files. The performance, as you'll see in a few minutes, is pretty good. And really, you know, for, as far as the specs are concerned, um, it's about on par with other single drive units we've looked at. So the Seagate Central, uh, the WD MyCloud, uh, as far as its underlying specs, as far as what's under the hood, it's the same. Although I was pretty impressed with the read and write performance on this one as compared to uh, some of the other devices. So let's take a look at how it is configured. So here we are, this is the web control panel for the device. And again, like most of these NAS drives, it has the same kind of thing. You log in with a web browser, although Buffalo also gives you the ability to configure the, the drive uh, with an app as well. But it's, it, all the conventions are the same. And I, I often really prefer to configure these from my computer because I can have a keyboard for typing things in. Now, what's interesting is that a lot of the important stuff is actually buried over here in advanced settings. And some of these settings aren't all that advanced, like setting up users and folders and all the basics that you really want to use to configure the device are all kind of buried uh, in the advanced settings. So we're going to start here. Uh, folders are basically little file shares that you set up on the device so that when your one of your computers connects to it over the network, it'll see uh, what's available and then you can set different user access rights based on the folder. And what's uh, kind of nice is that there is some granularity to it, a little bit more granularity than you might have on the MyCloud. Uh, and what you can do is go in and say uh, whether or not you want Mac or Windows users to access it. So you could say you know, maybe one folder is only for Macs and another one is for Windows computers on your network. Uh, it's delineated here. SMB is the Samba protocol, which is also what uh, Windows uses for its file sharing. AFP is the Apple file protocol, which is what Macs use to share files uh, through their file systems. You can also set it up as an FTP server. So um, you can have a folder maybe just for FTP users to drop files uh, back and forth. It also has an option here called backup. And what this does is it'll enable uh, the drive to act as a backup destination for your computers on your network. So if you're running a Mac, it'll support Time Machine. And again, nearly every NAS drive I've tested over the last the year or so uh, supports Time Machine, as this one does as well. But what they also do on the Buffalo is they give you a, a five-user license for Nova Store, which is a Windows-based backup utility. So it's kind of nice that you get uh, an actual uh, functioning backup system that you can use with the drive, and it'll back up uh, five computers on your local Windows computers in your local network and an unlimited number of Macs, which is very nice. And each user can get their own backup folder as well. Uh, DLNA is the uh, standard for connecting with smart televisions. And again, that's a feature that's on just about every NAS drive out there. This one works uh, just as well there. And then web access is where you can decide whether or not uh, somebody can access your folder remotely if they have the right user uh, settings there. And just to go into a little bit more detail, you can see uh, some of the things that you can do for setting individual user rights. So I could set up uh, for my Lon Seidman folder here uh, whether or not the, uh, you know, the admin can kind of do um, actually, right now, it looks like the admin can do nothing. Uh, we should change that and maybe uh, make it so I can do everything on here. Uh, you can go in and actually specify whether or not the user can see the folder, whether they can just read it or write to it. 
And again, basic uh, kind of stuff, but uh, you do have some uh, nice configuration. Again, the user interface is not as pretty as the WD MyCloud is. That's been my kind of my favorite um, uh, user interface for this kind of uh, device, but it is functional and it does give you the ability once you spend some time with it uh, to kind of go through and figure all that stuff out. So, all right, a few other things to take a look at before we move on. You can set up users as well as groups. So if you wanted, if you have users kind of going in and out, you can set up a group of users and then apply access rights to that group. And that way, uh, if somebody you know leaves your company and another person comes in, you just assign them to the group and they will inherit uh, all of the access rights that that group allows. Um, you can also go in and set uh, different settings for the kinds of file protocols you want to have available on the network. So you can shut down Windows file sharing altogether or turn it on. Uh, the same with the Mac or FTP and web access. Um, drives is just giving you an idea of what's plugged in currently to your system right now. It'll tell you what kind of drive is there. And if you have the USB drive plugged in, it'll also tell you what is uh, plugged in. And in the services menu, you can configure what the servers on the device will be doing. And what's kind of neat in the DLNA server settings is that you can restrict uh, which devices can access uh, your drive via DLNA. So if you click on here, it'll do an inventory of all of the DLNA capable devices on the network. And you could say, you know what, this smart TV is not going to be allowed to connect. And you can actually ban or allow devices based on their MAC address or IP address. And I thought that was kind of a neat thing. It does have an iTunes server, but this will only work uh, with uh, the uh, computer version of iTunes, not an iOS device. So iOS devices will only connect to that iTunes home sharing thing. So, uh, but you can uh, have a computer connect and be able to access music on the drive through iTunes. Um, applications, there aren't many on this one. There are more on some of the other ones, especially like the WD MyCloud Mirror and some of the uh, larger two drive things that we've looked at. Uh, this one just has the BitTorrent application available to you. Um, you have your network settings here. There's a ping utility built in, so you can kind of test to make sure if you're having trouble connecting, you can ping back to something else. And you can also set up uh, the different backup options here. And what's neat is that it has a direct copy mode as well that works with the front of the, or the back of the drive. There's a little function button back here, and you can plug in a USB drive, uh, hit this function button, and basically dump the entire contents of a USB drive directly without having to go over your network first uh, onto the drive itself. And Synology and a few other uh, of the drive manufacturers out there offer that as a feature as well. So um, that is another option that you can pursue there. Uh, management is pretty simple. You can look at the firmware updates, uh, you know, get email notifications when things go wrong and, and those sorts of things as well. So that is the advanced menu where I think actually you're going to spend a good deal of time. Now it was interesting when I went to set up the web access initially, I have an Apple Airport Extreme router and it didn't, uh, doesn't offer UPnP, which is what allows this drive to be seen across the web. Basically what happens is it communicates with the router and kind of opens up a little port uh, so that the data can flow back and forth. And because my router doesn't support that, when I went to click on uh, the web access initially, it just said, no, it doesn't work, you can't do it. Uh, read the manual. And it really didn't give me a lot of options for trying to figure out exactly what was going on. It wasn't until I really dug into the manual a little bit uh, that I looked into it. Other devices I found work a little bit better for that remote cloud access. They give you uh, some, you know, they, they work with the manufacturer's website or something to create kind of a workaround for uh, devices that don't allow that. The solution was uh, to poke a manual hole in my router. There's ways to do this through port forwarding. I set up a fixed IP address for this and then it can work uh, remotely, which is a little bit more work than some of the other NAS drives I've looked at. Um, once you get it set up and kind of figure it out, it's not too hard, but it is something you're going to have to deal with if, uh, if you want to do that. And then the other thing is that you can give it a name that you can remember so that when you're on your phone or your tablet, uh, you can then log into the drive with this name. So Buffalo kind of registers that name and knows where uh, to find your device when you go uh, into the mobile app. So let's take a look at that mobile app right now and see how it functions on an iPad. So like the rest of this product's user interface, things are pretty spartan. It's not all that intuitive, but once you figure it out, it isn't too bad. So uh, we'll just pop in and take a look at our drive here. And what's funny is when you connect, you just get that slash. It's like, what do you do with that? Uh, in the upper left-hand corner, you'll see a, a little thing that says file list. Uh, you push on that and it'll give you uh, your folders and whatnot. And you can see we've got uh, some pictures that I loaded in here from my other computer that I can now access on the iPad. There's a little slideshow mode at the bottom there. It'll do the same with videos. What I do recommend doing though is going into the options right away and changing the original, the image quality to original and the video quality to the high because what it's doing, what it'll do by default is send up smaller versions of your photos and videos. And if you're trying to use this as a way to back up 
uh, some important stuff that's coming off your mobile device, I would really recommend setting this to their highest settings so that you're getting the actual you know, regular version of the file that you created, not some scaled down or compressed version, and that's really important. Uh, there's some other options here as well, nothing uh, all that uh, important to look at. But what's, you know, again, the, the, the icons can get a little confusing because there's an upload button in the upper right-hand corner. But all that does uh, is send the file to another application that you have on your device, which, again, is pretty handy. So I could, you know, open it up in, you know, my other NAS drive or an Evernote or something like that. So you have full access to other applications that can access that file. But if you want to upload a file, you've got to pull up the side menu here, uh, hit the same icon uh, in the lower portion of the screen uh, to upload your file. Now, if you're on an iPad, you're not going to be able to grab files from other places. It'll only do uh, your camera roll at the moment, but we can say um, existing photo, and I'll just maybe grab uh, this picture here. I've already uploaded that one. The other problem is that if you hit the same one more than once, it'll keep loading up you know, duplicate copies of the same picture on there. Uh, then once you have everything loaded in, you can click the upload button uh, over here on the lower right, and that will put all the images onto your device. So pretty, pretty nice. Uh, there's also a web interface, so if you're on a computer, you can log in via a web browser to get at the, uh, the, the drive and its files to upload files back and forth. Again, it doesn't really work like Dropbox, but you are able to use it as a repository. It's just not going to sync up automatically. The mobile app will kind of sync, but if you are going to download a file that you want to edit, um, you download the file into the app, uh, you edit it, have to put it back in the app, and then upload it back to the drive. So as far as you know, doing live edits and that sort of thing, it's probably not going to be well-tuned for that. I think Google Drive or something of that nature is probably still uh, the best option to look at. Now, where this drive really shines is in its performance. As you can see, we're writing at about 42 to 44 megabytes per second, and we're seeing read speeds that usually hit around 100 megabytes per second, give or take. So uh, really nice performance, especially out of a drive uh, that's only one drive, and it's at this price point. It's really uh, very well performed. Performing, so you could probably push a couple of Blu-ray movies over your network simultaneously or something like that. So if you have a lot of people connecting and doing a lot of big file transfers, uh, that's going to work pretty well. I have this connected via a gigabit Ethernet network. It is hardwired uh, gigabit Ethernet, and you will see far less performance when you're hooked up to a wireless network. It's just the nature of the beast. So my recommendation is if you want to get the most out of one of these network-attached storage devices, you want them plugged into an Ethernet network, and you want the devices connecting to them also connected to that wired network. If you're only serving files to one computer or two computers, it might be better to have, and you need the speed and you don't want to do all the wiring, it's probably better just to have a USB drive that you plug in directly. But uh, for network performance, this is doing quite well. So what do I think? Well, it's definitely faster than the MyCloud, uh, but it is not as easy to use as the MyCloud, especially from the standpoint of configuration, as well as their mobile apps, and just all the kinds of ins and outs of using the drive. You know, when you get, a, you know, get beyond all those things, it works quite well, and the performance, as you saw, is really nice too. So I think if you're not afraid of configuring the device and looking at some of those menus that we had to go through to get everything set up, uh, this is a, probably a very good product to uh, take a look at, especially because it's not that expensive and uh, it gives you all of that performance. But if you're not looking for uh, something that's as complicated, then I still think the WD MyCloud is probably the best general consumer device. Uh, but this is definitely something that's a good foot in the door uh, for network attached storage. So um, I like it. I like it better now that I've spent some time with it than I did uh, on my first impression with it. So I'm glad it took a couple of days to really get to know the, the drive a little bit and get, uh, get going. One last thing that I thought was kind of funny was that um, there is no software control to shut it down. You actually just hit the power switch. And I always get nervous uh, turning off a, a drive with a switch. But uh, you just flick the switch and it actually goes through its shutdown procedure. So it's kind of a, a nice thing. You can just walk up to it and shut it off without having to log into a computer first. So I just thought that was kind of a, a neat little anecdote to close out on. So that is the, uh, the Buffalo Link Station 210, and it's a pretty good device. They just need to work on its software a little bit. This is Lon Sivan. Thanks for watching.